So, Robbie says we're gonna start a new video today. What we're doing, I have no idea. But, as always, I'm waiting for him. We might be working on the Jeep frame. Who knows? What the heck? First place! Come on, we won! Look at first place! They what gave are you me doing? a cape! Look I, at it! I see that, but what are you doing? What does it say? What does it say? It says first place. Yeah, it doesn't say gladiators have still got first place. YouTubers got first place. I just wanted to see if the cape would make me faster, but it didn't. If you guys missed the last video, we got first place. We destroyed the gladiators of steel. Me, Matt's Off-Road Recovery, Fab Rats, and Rudy's Adventure and Design. We got first place at the Derby. Let's go check out the carnage. All right, so basically, the car, we could have done some more damage, but we did what we needed to do, and we got first place at the Demolition Derby Hurricane Utah, Washington County Fair. YouTubers beat the gladiators of steel, and that's all that matters. We got first, it was a team effort. I ended up taking TJ McPhee out at the end for the win for Team YouTube. Got a little bit of damage. We got a bent frame rail up here. We got some sheet metal damage. Got a little bit of damage to the, to the engine. Not a lot, but when my own teammate came barreling across the arena and T-boned me. <laughs> Well, Paul rattled my engine and it broke the fan, which in turn put a hole in the radiator hose, which cut the belts. I mean, it did a lot of damage, so you saw steam the rest of the show. But it didn't stop me and it didn't slow the engine down. This Collier Performance 383 stroker did what it needed to do and we got the win. But we got a bumper that's bent here, some sheet metal damage, all right here. Somebody sideswiped me, but luckily the Fabrat sticker's still perfect, the Matt's Off Road Recovery sticker's still perfect. Oh. Somebody scratched out Demery's name. I'm gonna need to fix that. They weren't supposed to hit that. That's the most valuable part of the whole car. Shout out to Moto Assassin Graphics. Jesse McGuire hooked us up with the door wraps. Did an awesome job for our team. So my trunk set exactly where I needed it. It was able to bend into a box. Now it's a battering ram. So this car is gonna live to see another day. Not today. We've got a lot of stuff to do. So we're gonna start it up, get it parked over here out of the way, and then we gotta work inside the shop. So unfortunately, we've been neglecting all the work at the shop. While we've been playing, trying to make these YouTube videos, the shop's gotten behind. So we're pulling some collision work in today. We're gonna be pulling an industrial injections truck that actually got wrecked at the Heavy Wrecker Olympics. Sorry, can't say Olympics. The Heavy Wrecker Games down at Sand Hollow. And we towed it up here. We've been dealing with the insurance. We've got some parts. So we're gonna pull it in and do some body work. Anyway, stick with us because this week is gonna be body work week. We're a little bit too far behind. Hey Ricky Bobby, game first or last. Hey, what he said. Shake and bake, baby. Still runs good. We're gonna be pulling in this Dodge truck, so we'll get that. It's actually limping. It's missing a leg. So our lower ball joint popped through my skate, so we're gonna hurry and lift it put a piece of metal or something so it doesn't go through, as you can see. Now we're stuck. We're gonna need a new skate. <laughs> so we've just about worn the skate out, but the skate did its job. I'll definitely need a new one. What I'm gonna do, put it back under here, put a piece of metal on it, let her down. We've already busted through the skate once from the lower ball joint. So every time we repositioned it after that, it had to slide off the skate. So we put it right back close to the same spot where it was, but it now busted through again. So we gotta move it one last time because we're almost all the way in. All right, that's quite the ordeal, but we got the truck in. So we're gonna get it all jacked up, get our parts, and then we're gonna do some explaining on what we're gonna do to this thing. So the first thing that we do when we pull in a collision repair job is an inspection of the estimate, and we do a check-in sheet. We actually pull in all of our parts out of the parts room. They're right here behind us. What we'll do is we'll do a thing called mirror matching. So we'll do a teardown, and then we'll match it to all the parts that we have. And whatever parts we don't have, we'll write a supplement to the insurance, and we'll get those parts. So me and Hillbilly are gonna start taking the front end apart on this truck. We've got to inspect this front axle housing because we're pretty sure that it's bent. We don't have a new housing on the original bid, so it's probably gonna need one, but we have a lower control arm. We have all the other parts around it. We'll inspect it and figure out if we need to get it. We're gonna start by taking the grill out, the headlight, the bumper, the fender, the door, dripping this thing down. 
One thing we want to do as we're taking it apart is we're going to inspect it for damage. So I'll put my bolts in a Ziploc bag. Then we'll go over the grill and we'll find out if anything's wrong with it. If something is wrong with it, we're going to make a note on our supplement sheet. And we're going to cross-reference it with our estimate and make sure that we have all the broken damage parts that we pull off getting replaced. Headlight's pretty well destroyed. We've just about got the bumper all undone. The main harness is taken apart. This bracket is bad. But what we wanted to do is take it all off to where we could get in there and get the bolt pack off right here. All right, so we've got the fender off. Now we can kind of assess. We've got a little bit of damage down here on the lower A pillar and the rocker panel area. So that's all gonna get taken care of. This is damaged on the front edge of the door. We still need to get this door stripped down we're gonna to need to strip the back door down and take the bed off. There's a lot more we gotta do, but that's all we're gonna do for tonight because I am exhausted. So it is tomorrow. All right, so it is the next day. We got a lot of cool stuff going on today. We actually have the guys, Andy the Bolt Guy. He's from boltonuts.com. He's here setting up our bolt bins. So we're gonna check that out here in a little bit. In the meantime, we've got Hillbilly and Steve. They've pulled the bolts out of the bed. We're gonna be lifting this bed off and getting this truck torn down to where we can start bolting on the new stuff and really see where we're at with this repair process. We're gonna get the bed lifted off, get it set down, and then go back to the front end. With our Lift King, Hillbilly could have lifted this off by himself, but I was here, so I was insisting. We're gonna get this put down on a Lift King bed stand. The reason we're pulling the bed off is we've got to do the cab corner on this. And the reason we have to do the cab corner is because the rocker is damaged and it is connected to the unit side of the vehicle. So we'll show you that here in a second. By now you guys should know that Robbie only uses the best of the best, which is Lift King products when it comes to bed carts and bed, let, uh, bed lifts. So we're gonna get the bed set down on this, lit, uh, on this cart. Just getting his doors all stripped down. Got all the fasteners loose out of the door panel. And then you just pick up, pick up, unhook these tabs out of the grooves on the door. I like to pop the window switch out of the door panel. You can hook it back up and roll the window up and down as needed. All right, so while Hillbilly's back there taking that door apart, I've started taking my door panel off. What we're gonna do is what's called 100% teardown. So I'm gonna tear every single bolt and nut and piece out of this door because we're replacing it. All the broken stuff's gonna get put on our supplement sheet and then everything that we need, we will get. All right, so this window has tint on it. You gotta be very careful pulling it out. Watch, just because I said that'll scratch it. All right, we didn't scratch it. Lucky. All right, so we've got this inner panel all stripped apart except for one wire. So on these Dodge trucks, it comes out as an assembly. So the inner door panel holds the regulator, holds the latch assembly, makes it pretty nice. So now all I need to do, I'm probably gonna leave this wire in. I'm gonna take the outer handle, I'm gonna strip out a few more things just so that I know if it breaks, we can get it replaced. And then we're gonna pull this door off and we'll be bolting on the brand new door and starting to fit up, fit up this front end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around and take out every clip on this weather strip. That way, if anything breaks, we get it replaced before the truck has to go home. Try to get ahead of it. If you just give it a little bit of pressure, it'll bump the clips out. So you just pull, find the clip, pop it, move on. All right, so that didn't break. So we can reuse the molding. This one, we'll take off and check. All right, so that one's reusable as well. All right, so we got the door all done. Now we're gonna go through our parts, figure out where our door's at, check it, and bolt it up, and then we'll start moving forward. All right, so I got this front door hung. Oh my heck, back door's not even shut. Well, it's still out of adjustment. So I got, the, I got the front door on, it's out of adjustment, so I'm gonna move the lower hinge and get this door to settle and get the gap to open up. So all we do is move the lower hinge, like a millimeter, barely anything, to get that gap to settle. Now we're a hair too big. Now we need to come back just slightly, I'll loosen it, we'll bring the hinge back a little bit and get this gap right. Right there. Okay. All right, now we're even all the way down. We've got this door all set. Now we're gonna start moving forward and getting our repair work done, getting the fender bolted up. We've just about got it. So we have something awesome for you guys today. 
Andy and Gary from boltsandnuts.com flew out here from Cleveland, Ohio to set up our Mac Daddy 35,000 piece, 300 and some odd bin bolts and nuts supply. It's one of our biggest kits. We actually sell three variations of this bad boy. This is the automotive edition, but we also have a farm and industrial edition too. And each one is over 35,000 pieces. And to be totally honest, I kind of want to get the other ones because I absolutely love bolts and nuts. I'm like giddy for when they leave because I'm going to go through every single one of these bins and just touch the bolts, touch them all. They flew out here specifically to set this up for me and I, I can't thank them enough. Absolutely awesome. So if you guys are in need of bolts and nuts, head to boltsandnuts.com. Get yourself an assortment. They sell these awesome little kits. They're kind of like what we gave away on the live stream. I've been using it for the last week. One row is almost completely empty. Building the derby car. So I just took it over to the car, used all the three eights. Look, we've only got a couple nuts left, just two. We're gonna be restocking that. You grab your phone, you scan that QR code right there. It'll take you to that exact item on our website. It makes reordering super simple. And we actually put that on all of our kits. Even that kit we were out, there's a little tiny QR code in the top right corner. You scan that, it takes you to a list of every single item that was in that kit. Just makes things super easy. So running out doesn't have to be difficult. You scan that QR code, send you to the website, you purchase it, they ship it directly to you. So grateful to be getting this kit. I'm excited to use them. We have our grade eight cap screws. We have coarse and then it starts at fine thread. Uh, it comes down fine thread, it's quarter through five eight. Stainless steel hex cap screws here, flange bolts. And then all of our metric 10.9 hex cap screws. Stainless steel button sockets. These are really good for dressing things up. They just look super fancy. And then we have all the nuts and washers to go with them here. They're all labeled, everything is QR coded. We have all of these side kits. You can grab it and go. So when Robbie's out doing a recovery, he can just take this with him. Just pulls right out, boom, little lock, little handle on there. And each one of these has a different item in there. Right here's that QR code. They'll send it back, load it back up. Good to go again. So easy. We have sockets, flange bolts, rivet nuts, grilling screws. There's a lot here. Oh yeah, and so. you can add anything you want. This is gonna make our days way more efficient. We're not gonna have to run to the hardware store like we do every every other day. We've got our own hardware store here now. We're actually gonna add a fourth bin because this is all grade eight. This is super strong bolts, but I'm gonna add an entire bin full of grade five and a few other sizes that I don't commonly use all the time, but stuff that we have for the derby cars. And it's gonna go in this bin right here. So we have another 112 sections of bolts and nuts coming. So we're already adding to it. We're gonna make the Mac Mac Daddy kit. This, this little section is to be continued right here. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea until we clean ourselves out in a day on some stuff. Well, that's a great idea. Then grab your little phone, scan your QR code and reorder them. Problem solved. Something that they're gonna offer for you. Because of you guys, because you brought us together, we're giving back. If you guys need some bolts and nuts, head over to boltsandnuts.com, use the code LATEN10. That's right, LATEN10. You're gonna be getting 10% off one time, so make it count. Head over there, stock your garage up, stock your shop up, do whatever you need to do, because 10% is pretty huge. Again, that's LATEN10, boltsandnuts.com. Head over there and get yourself some hardware with code LATEN10 for 10% off. Thanks, Robbie, appreciate you. <laughs> appreciate it, man. Awesome. All right, now you guys can go home. Bye. All right, we'll see you. You may not realize it, but it is the next day. Yesterday, we got our bolts and nuts assortment. I can't even talk about it because I'm so excited. All right, so we're getting back to we're getting back to work on industrial injections, 2017 Dodge Ram, but the wheel got ripped off. So we took the control arm off and we realized that the front axle tube is actually bent. So Hillbilly is gonna spend the next 20 minutes and he's gonna rip the front axle out because we have a new used one coming that'll be here tomorrow. We're gonna put in this to where we can actually get this truck mobile and rolling again. Right over here where the shock mounts to the axle tube, it's all bent. So we're not sure if the C's are bent, we can see that there's some distortion here at the top where the ball joint goes in. So we're changing it because we don't want to risk it. It's a front end. We don't want to have any issues going down the road. Getting a new used axle, gonna be ripping it out, new shock, new wishbone, all the good stuff. Okay, so I'm just working on my last, the last bolt to take, uh, loosen up, track bar bolt. And then all I have left is just push the two wishbone bolts out on the passenger side. They're already loosened. Just gonna push them out and the axle will be ready to come out. Okay, so I got the sway link, or I can't remember what it's called now, but now I'm working on the wishbone bolts. Their nuts are already off of them. Now I'm just trying to get them out. There's one. And there's two. All I gotta do now is just do a little pushy push and the axle will fall off. Here we go. Oh. 
vehicle is completely out. Now let's get it drug out from underneath the vehicle and it will be done. I'm not feeling the best. I've got a sore throat, stuff your nose, you probably can hear it. I'm not feeling like the normal tough guy that I usually am. So, this is how we're taking the front axle out. Pallet with the pallet jack. So, yeah. Here we go. Rot roll. I'm hitting the wishbone. Now it should clear everything. That's how I got the axle out today. All right, so we just determined this axle housing's bent, got it pulled. Hillbilly's got the new wishbone in the truck. I'm gonna hurry assess the damage on the rocker panel and then I'm gonna fix it. So I've got my dent fix maxi steel repair station over here. I'm gonna pull some dent and do some mud work. Boom. I was gonna bolt the fender up, but the rocker panel is damaged. So we're gonna show you guys how to fix it. The entire rocker is damaged. All the way down to here. We're gonna be fixing and pulling all the steel. Got a little bit of damage here that I'm gonna use a hammer and dolly and some pliers. And I'm gonna start working my way back, figuring out this metal. I'm gonna use some tabs from Dent Fix. Rockers are never fun. All right, so this is what I'm checking for, is that this gap is right and I'm flat against the pinch weld and this gap is correct. So now what I get to do is start fixing the metal. But I'll keep the fender off until I get the rocker panel fixed now. All right, so I'm getting close. I'm using the maxi. I'm just pulling the metal slow. I've kind of filed it off to see my low spots. Got a little bit underneath it. I'm gonna grab my belt grinder and get some paint off. So I need to pull some more straight down and then tap that in. And the metal work through here should be pretty well finished. Slowly but surely, we'll get this rocker worked around. Slow little pulls. <laughs> Gotta talk to it nicely. Ask it to go back in. All right, so I've just got a few little low spots right here and right there. I'm just gonna pin them, pull them, and I'll grind them and sand them. And we should have this all done. Just about got it. All right, so I've got this metal work all pulled up here in the front. This is fillable, this is pretty dang close. I'll sand it up where you can almost not even tell. And then we'll skim coat this, but we've got to keep working back. <laughs> so what we're doing here is our rocker is smashed up. So we need to bring all of this out to get that metal to go in. So we're using keys. Now these keys weld on like that. And we'll slide this rod through and we'll use a bridge puller and we'll pull all the metal out while I tappy tappy. All right, so we've got all our keys in. We're gonna put our rod and use our bridge puller to try to straighten this rocker panel out. So now I'm gonna tap the metal and try to get it to go back where it needs to be. I'm just using, oh, one broke off. I'm just using a dolly. The pressure of the keys and the bridge puller is making it to where I can actually flatten out the metal down here. Just releasing the pressure. I'm using the dolly because there's weight and I can control it. All right, we've got that metal back where we want it. And yeah, that's much better. Look at that, virtually a fully repaired rocker panel. So we got it metal worked all the way to here. So that's like two thirds of the rocker panel. So this turned into a way, way bigger job than we planned on. We're probably only gonna get through the metal work today because instead of the front edge of the rocker. Now it's the entire bottom part of the rocker. We found some dents up here. So this is just turning into a much bigger job than we planned. Moving on, we've got this whole section that's dished in. So we're gonna key this, key that. Well, we're gonna key this section and get it pulled out. I'm gonna show you my straight edge. Kind of hard to see how far in it is, but it's in pretty far. You can see that the dish is there. So we're gonna pull it all out, then we're gonna pull this all out, and then we're basically gonna sand the entire rocker, do our mud work, get it primed. We're gonna have an axle in about a week. So we'll be able to put the front end back in it, get this thing mobile, and really get this cooking along and get it done. Now, we're gonna get all these keys put on. Corey, make a sweet little montage. We 
just gonna watch that rocker panel come. Yeah, I'll keep it flush. Yeah. So I'm gonna move my bridge over just a little bit. I'm going in. Pretty straight right there, so let's come over here. So all I'm doing is releasing pressure. All right, and that's it for that section. So now we're gonna twist off all these keys. We're gonna key this whole section. Not even gonna lie, this Dent Fix Maxi with the bridge puller and the key system is an absolute game changer. Like that literally needs such minimal amounts of filler. Crazy, crazy awesome. I'm gonna do a little bit of pulling through here. Once we're done keying this, we're gonna set up some keys because this ends up going flat. So we've got a dent from right here to right there. We'll get that all set up. We've got a little pooch down here. So as we're pulling the metal, we'll get that worked up right there. Oh, that's like a factory switch. Oh, I'm trying to beat something out of it that's supposed to be there. This is how easy these keys come off. You think they weigh enough to knock a tooth out? Okay. Yeah, of course. Here, let's see. Pink. No way. Okay, hold it. Let off. That's done. And that's how easy. It leaves these little dotties. So we're going to grind them off, sand it, and then I like to use the grinder and put a little heat into the metal. Then I tap tappy. Tap tap -a So I'm just looking to do a very light grind. I don't want to take all the metal off. Now I'll go through and tap it as needed. Feels good. Dang. Dang, Gina. All right, well, I'm going to call that metal worked. So we're going to go get a little bit of filler. We're going to fill this area, this area, that area, that area, this, this. So these will just use glaze. We're not going to use any Bondo on them because they're just so minor. These are, we're just fixing basically rock chips. They look like little door dings. We'll get this all ready and get some filler on it. So I am putting tape everywhere that I don't want filler. But I can peel the tape off and I don't have to sand all the little edges. So I use Rage Optex filler. It sands good. It goes from pink to green when it's all hardened and ready. Most all of this actually gets sanded off. So here we mix it up. We'll spread it. This is so awkward to try to bend my hand. Let's hurry and peel off this tape and then we'll let this filler harden up. We'll come back in and sand it all. It takes about five extra minutes to tape everything off, but it saves you about 30 minutes of sanding. So it's completely worth it. So this is all hardened up. I've got the center section all sanded. I'm gonna sand the front and the back, and then we'll glaze it all. All right, so I've got all of the mud work finished. I need to glaze it, but the damage that goes all the way to the back of the rocker, we were talking today and we realized we need to go check the bed. So down here, we have some damage also, and this bolt is ripped through on the back side of the flare. So we've got to disassemble the bedside get all the stuff off, fix it, so we don't miss any damage. So we've got a lot done on this truck, we still have a lot to do, but as always, we appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video, go check out this one.